Welcome back to Morning Joe. Join us now here in New York City, a member of the Senate Appropriations Committee, Democrat Tammy Baldwin of Wisconsin. Senator, great to have you with us here in New York. Great to join you. We want to talk policy. We want to talk about your race. But I do have to ask you about the president's comments uh, yesterday as he talked about Haitian and African immigrants. He's now tweeted uh, just in the last few minutes, quote, the language used by me at the DACA meeting was tough, but this was not the language used. What was really tough was the outlandish proposal made a big setback for DACA. So he does admit, I guess, to using uh, tough language, as he calls it, but says the reporting from the Washington Post, uh, forgive the term, about S-hole countries uh, was inaccurate. Just your reaction, if not to the specifics of it, but the tone of what he said. Yeah. Well, obviously, I wasn't in the meeting uh, yesterday or the one a couple of days earlier. But my focus uh, is to keep our promise to these dreamers who have known no other country than America as their home. And I... Uh, you know, in trying to get that job done, uh, we have to realize that the president has contradicted himself probably 20 times in the last three days. And if we're going to keep on moving forward and try to get this over the finish line, trying to get this done, um, you know, let's be selective. Let's take him at his word when he said, I'll sign what you send me. Let's keep on working. Let's try to get something through both houses of Congress. And if it's sitting on his desk, it'll, you know, It'll be on him. He we wants to shut down the government over a wall. He can do that, but it'll be on him. And, you know, at the same meeting that he said, I'll sign whatever you send us, he said he loved the dreamers. I mean, yeah. this is so, uh, this is so full of contradictions and including, you know, whatever he did actually say yesterday is deeply disturbing and sickening if it was what was reported. As we watched the meeting the two days ago, um, the 55 minute televised meeting, um, we saw Republicans in that room sort of jumping in to correct the president, Kevin McCarthy among them saying, now, wait a minute, this isn't what we really believe, um, Mr. President. Joe and others and, and people on our show have asked why people like Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell haven't stepped forward more strongly when the president says things like he's alleged to have said in, about Haitian immigrants. When you talk to your Republican colleagues in the Senate, do they express private frustration with the president? What do they say about him that they're often not saying publicly? Oh, they certainly express, um, you know, huge frustration, and especially those who, like me, are in the Senate to fight for the constituents who sent us there to fight for our states. Um, you know, I think the, the, the conflict in terms of whether they speak out or not is wanting to get stuff done. And I know right now, obviously, we're talking about getting, uh, keeping our promise to the dreamers who are uh, contributing to America and uh, should not, you know, should get a chance to stay in the only country they've known. Um, but we're also talking about a budget deal that's hugely consequential. We're talking about, you know, in my state, I have tens of thousands of uh, retirees who are, are uh, have the prospect of losing their pension because of uh, a crisis that we're not attending to. We have the Children's Health Insurance Program with nine million uh, American children, mostly children of working poor parents, uh, at risk of not having insurance. And it goes on. Community health centers that might have to shutter. Senator, a little over to politics now. It would look like the Democrats might have a good year coming up in 2018, but you are defending a lot of seats, you as a party, and yes. you in particular are seeing really a high level of spending by some yes. of these outside conservative groups. I guess the number is 3.1 million, which is more than all of your colleagues combined. What is going on in Wisconsin, oh. and why do they see such an opportunity there? Yeah, and it's actually even more than that, but I... Uh, one, one obvious fact, Wisconsin has always been a battleground state. Um, but I think this spending, which, uh, you know, in terms of media buys, we've seen well over five million so far in 2017, the off year. I think it goes beyond that. I think um, in some ways it's personal because uh, I have been unafraid to stand up to the powerful interests that fund these uh, super PACs and, and make these expenditures um, on behalf of the people who sent me to Washington. And so whether it's standing up to pharmaceutical companies that jack up the prices of uh, 
you know, life-saving uh, medications that my constituents rely on. You know, and I've teamed up with John McCain on a transparency and accountability bill for the drug companies, or or whether it's um, you know standing up to the Washington bureaucracy on. Uh, trying to make progress on issues like Buy American, which is so important to my manufacturing state and the hardworking people of Wisconsin, or standing up to Wall Street and hedge funds who um, have yeah. ended, uh, well, uh, closed a couple of companies in Wisconsin, uh, the activists in particular. And, uh, you know, they take note of who's standing up. Senator, let, fighting. let me just ask you a quick, let me just to, to expand on Heidi's question. Yeah. You're going to be in a really competitive race. There's no question about right. it. You got Scott Walker running for re-election. This is a st state that had been traditionally Democratic in presidential elections. Donald Trump won it narrowly. Mm -hmm. So you guys are almost a perfect window into a Trump swing state, right? So just talk about the political dynamics, not just the money, but yeah. what you're looking at in a race where Scott Walker's running for re-election, Republicans are going to be highly motivated to get out. At the same time, presumably Donald Trump has lost some altitude in your state. Just talk about all of that. Yeah, so one of the things I've seen change over time is, you know, we, we've always been a battleground state, but we, we are um, sadly a lot more polarized than um, I remember in, in early years. Fewer ticket splitters um, and, and just, uh, d you know, deeply held partisan um, uh, views. Uh, so I've seen that change over time, um, but I think 2018 will be uh, a lot about the field and a lot about who turns out to the polls. Um, and what I see in my state and I see across the country, perhaps starting from Election Day in 2016, perhaps starting from the day after the inauguration, is just the incredible engagement, the indivisible groups, the move on groups, the March on Washington organizing groups. And, you know, I wondered whether that energy would stay and remain through the year. And it has. And it's going strong. And I think that's going to bode well for massive turnout among um, progressives and swing voters. A lot of people watching your race very closely this year. Senator yeah. Tammy Baldwin of Wisconsin, thanks for being here with us Thank in New you. York. Good to see you. Still ahead, President Trump explains what he meant when he tweeted that Republicans should, quote, finally take control of the Russia investigation, plus the firing for which the president says he doesn't get enough credit. We're back in a moment. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.